Hey guys, Alexander here, and in this video, we will be covering hypothesis testing of a multiple linear regression model in the matrix form. So let's remind ourselves first about the regression parameters. In a previous video, I've shown you that the expected value of beta hat is equal to beta, the variance of beta hat is equal to sigma squared x transpose x inverse, and the variance hat of beta hat, which is an estimator of the variance of beta hat, is equal to sigma squared hat times x transpose x inverse. And this sigma squared hat, this is an estimator for this variance over here, the population variance, sigma squared. So sigma squared hat, how we calculate it, it is the MSE, the mean squared error. And this is equal to the SSE, divided by n minus p minus 1, where we have p regressors of interest, the 1 is for uh, our um, beta 0, and n is the number of samples, number of samples in our population. So this can also be written as epsilon hat transpose epsilon hat over n minus p minus 1. And this is our estimator for the population variance in our model. And since we can't exactly determine this variance over here, so we're going to need to use an estimator, which is the sigma squared hat. So going on from here, I've also shown that beta hat follows the normal distribution with the mean of beta based on this and the variance of sigma squared x transpose x inverse based on the variance of beta hat, which we have already derived before. And you'll find the links to these videos up in the corner. Okay, so we know that beta hat follows the normal distribution. We know that this is its uh, variance covariance matrix. And now we need, if we're going to be doing hypothesis testing, we're going to need something called the standard error of beta hat. And the standard error is the square root of the variance hat of beta hat. So the estimator of the variance of beta hat. And what this is, is it's equal to the square root of sigma squared hat times x transpose x inverse. So these are the formulas that you need to know. If you want to find out the standard error for a specific uh, regression uh, parameter, say beta 1 hat, if we're interested in the standard error for beta 1 hat, then it's going to be equal to the square root of sigma squared hat times x transpose x inverse um, 1, 1, where this 1, 1 refers to, if we look at the matrix, x transpose x inverse, the first row and the first column, these are the entries for beta zero. These are the entries that are related to beta zero. Then the, the first element here, if we start with a base of zero and we go to one, two, three, four, so it's going to be the first one after beta zero. So you're going to be looking for the one that is in this uh, first first row, first column, if we start with a base of zero, or you can say that it's row one, row two, and you look at the second row one, because that's the one that's going to be related to beta one. So if you want the index corresponding to the beta one, you're going to have to go and go to the, not the first, but the second element over here in the second diagonal element. And you're going to take that, you're going to focus on that entry of the um, variance covariance matrix, which is the sigma squared hat multiplied by this guy. Okay, so we're going to take sigma squared hat and multiply it by x transpose x inverse, and this, this entry over here, and we're going to take the square root of that to get the standard error of beta 1 hat. So if you like to think in computer science terms, call this first row, row 0, and then the second row, row one, then it matches nicely with beta one is for row one, beta zero is for row zero. So then we just need to focus on the diagonal terms to get the standard errors. Okay, so let's look at an example of the test statistic. Then. 
if we have um, the null hypothesis that H zero, that beta one hat is equal to zero, as opposed to the two-sided alternative that H one, that beta one hat does not equal zero. Well, what is the form of our test statistics and how is it going to work? Well, the, because our model is formulated as it is and because beta hat follows the normal distribution and so when we are doing hypothesis testing, we are using also an estimator of the variance over here, the mean squared error. We're using that estimator and that is then used for our standard error. So the test statistic for regression parameters, for these regression coefficient, this regression coefficient beta one, it's always equal to beta j hat minus beta j under h naught. So this zero over here indicates the value of your parameter under h naught, under the null hypothesis, which in this case will be zero. So you have beta j hat minus beta j under the null hypothesis over divided by the standard error of beta j hat. So how do we uh, then use this formula? So let's just plug in beta one. We're not going to be using any numbers. We're going to be looking at the formula. So it's beta one hat minus beta j zero, which is the value of beta j under the naught, under the null hypothesis, which is zero. So it's beta one hat minus zero divided by the standard error of beta one hat. So this can be further simplified to written as beta one hat divided by the square root of sigma squared hat x transpose x inverse and one one indicating that it's the first row and the first column and where row zero row zero is uh, the first row of the variance covariance matrix and uh, row one corresponds to this element. So this is element one, one. This is element zero, zero, just to make it clear. So for this matrix X transpose X inverse, when I say one, one, I refer to this uh, element that you can find in row one and column one, with the first column being row zero, uh, 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 the first row being row zero and the first column being column zero. So if you have these values, you can easily plug them in and this you can also, even if you have the mean squared error, you can just plug it in and this will give you the value of your test statistic. Now this test statistic beta j hat minus beta j under the null hypothesis over the standard error of beta j hat, this follows the t distribution with n minus p minus one degrees of freedom. So if it follows the t distribution, then we know that if n is sufficiently large, then the t distribution is going to look pretty much just like a, a, normal, a normal distribution. So it will have this bell-shaped curve to it. So what are we interested in when we're doing hypothesis testing? Well, we are interested in our rejection regions. And since we're doing a, a two-sided hypothesis test, there's going to be one to the right and one to the left, and they're going to be symmetrical about the mean, which is going to be zero in this case. So our, our rejection region at a level of, if we're doing our hypothesis test at a level of significance, alpha equal to say 5%, then this upper bound is going to be T at alpha over two, which is 5% divided by two, so it's 2.5% and our degrees of freedom. And the lower bound is going to be negative t of alpha over two and n minus p minus one. So if the value of your test statistic t, which is equal to beta one hat over the standard error of beta one hat, if this is greater than this value, if it falls in this region, or if it falls in this region, then we say that we can safely reject the null hypothesis at alpha equals 5%. But if, if our, so what that means is that the absolute value of our test statistic has to be greater than T at alpha over two and N minus P minus one for a two tailed test.
So this is for a two-tailed test. So if our test statistic is greater than the critical value, if the absolute value is greater than the positive critical value, then we know that we can safely reject the null hypothesis. So you can reject H0 if and only if for a two-tailed test. For a one-tailed test where it's the right tail, so then the rejection region is just going to be T at alpha and N minus P minus one. And similarly, if it's a left left tail test that you're worried in about, then you're going to have negative T of alpha and N minus P minus one to be your rejection regions. So that's how we do a simple hypothesis test for the matrix form of the regression, multiple linear regression model. Thank you for watching. Work Commander out.